rebuke Satan and all the workers of darkness and evil. No witch may abide in here. No warlock may abide in this place. We command all workings of astral projection to cease and be gone. And we speak the blood of the Lamb upon this house. The anointing of the Holy Ghost destroys all yoke. And we receive peace from on high by the power of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord, for divine protection, for the anointing of power and the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. All right, all right. Bless God. Um, let's begin now. Go to where John 15, everybody. I want to bless God for you. Let's go. Give me a little volume, just, just a little, to piquito mas. All right, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you, Lord. Okay, that's good. John chapter 15. Take a look at, well, good evening. May God bless you. Uh, my name is Apostle Reginald Lawrence. I am the senior pastor of Church of Deliverance International here in the city of Hawaiian Gardens, California. This is our Bible study on Tuesday night, and we are beginning a series of teachings that pertain to the subject, love. If you'd like a copy of this, do call our church office at 562-653-9868. Do request tape offer number 822. And if you'd like any of the previous teachings to do leave the information, we'll be glad to respond to your request. Note that this is a deliverance ministry. People are delivered and set free by the power of God in healing and in demonic warfare. We thank you for uh, tuning in to be a part of what God is doing through this church today. And again, if you'd like prayer or any other assistance, do leave the information. We'll be glad to respond to your request. You may give also in support uh, to this ministry, this teaching is a blessing for you or any of them. You may support this ministry by uh, tuning into our online website and uh, we have a secured site there. You may give on that website. May God bless you. Uh, our website is codii.org and uh, may the Lord bless you for your tuning in. All right, this is uh, the teaching on love and we're going to start at John chapter 15. Take a look at verse number 9. I'll stop at verse number 17. Please get your Bibles, follow along with me, have your notes, pen and pad ready. If you need to take notes, we're going to begin, and this is going to be a blessing for all of us. All right, this is Jesus speaking. Red letter means Jesus is the one who's doing the actual speaking. He says, um, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love continue ye in my love if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain unto you? That my joy might remain in you and that you, your joy might be full. Verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if, say if, if you do whatsoever I command you. All right, there's a stipulation. You are my friends 
if you do whatsoever I have commanded you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth what? Fruit, fruit, fruit. That underline that word fruit, that you should go and, and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that you love one another. Amen. All right. There's a few things we're going to look into as we talk about this now. Uh, the subject is love. Can you say love? love that's our subject tonight is the very uh, important thing that God's trying to get into every one of our hearts that we might understand the ways of God and we must know what God is saying uh, to us uh, I want to just share with you that he made some statements here that are very pertinent for every one of us to understand especially as deliverance ministers we must understand what the Lord is speaking because whenever God is speaking you have to hear into what he's actually implying. We can't make assumptions. We've got to study. Amen? We've got to study to figure out what he's trying to convey to us. And in this particular, the word itself he's conveying to us is love. The Greek word is agape. Can you say agape? And so it deals with affection or benevolence that means a caring for to assist the other person out of difficulty are you with me uh, a love and so it's not just uh, giving them things but it deals with giving the person what they need what they need not what they want but what they need. And that may deal with giving them what's best for them. Amen? And so the Bible declares in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 19, that whom God loves, he rebukes and he chastens them. He, he's, he's trying to keep us alive and keep us uh, in his perfect will and uh, there are times that we may be drawn off by the devil and by people that the devil's using to do things and drawn out by things rather that may seem good but may not be right according to God's divine plan for our lives. And the devil knows that if we, may, if he saw, if we saw things that looked bad, we probably would not go for them but they may well appeal to our desire, the things that he brings before us. And they may appeal to our wants. If somebody says something smart to you, you may want to say something smart back to them. That's what the flesh wants to do. But that's not the way of God. That's not, what, that, that's not what's going to get you uh, the presence of God working with you because that's not God's way. He says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And so as we, we read this particular text, the stipulated word was, if you, if you, in John, in John 15 and 14 says, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. All right? And he says in John 15 and 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. And so if I go off and do whatever I feel like doing, I can justify myself 
but it doesn't allow me to be in the good graces and the love of God. No, it, it doesn't. No matter what I say, you got to understand God is love. Can you say that? The essence of God is love, and God is always looking out for what's best for his creations. He's always trying to do what's the right thing for us. Amen? And so, what the devil wants to do is trick us out of the love of God and cause us to be vengeant, to uh, retaliate. And Jesus, the Bible declares in the book of Isaiah 53, when he was mistreated, never responded back in return. Never, the Bible said he was as a lamb before his shears were dumb, but he opened not his mouth. And what we find is the devil constantly coming towards us to try and get us out of the love of God. Because he knows that if we are out of the love of God, then God can't work through us. Now, we may be God's children, hello, but even though we are God's children, if we are not operating in God, we are at that moment not in oneness with God, in agreement with God. And the word says in Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? So we got to be in oneness with God. And oneness comes by way of obedience to his will. So let me just first tell everyone, if you're going to love God and you want the love of God, you got to get your feelings out of the way. Are you with me? So we got to understand that God is love. And the only way you can have God flowing in you and through you is that your heart is filled with love. And in love, the devil cannot penetrate. Love conquers all. Because love is oneness with God. Amen? Love is what? Love is oneness with God. And so when you're in love, you're in love, the love of God, then God can flow through you. And that's why when a marriage itself and the two people are in a marriage, they love one another, then the children are produced as good fruit. There's happiness, there's joy in the house. But the Bible says, and everything is deal dealing with this, the Bible says that, that uh, in the book of Matthew chapter 12, uh, let me give the exact scripture, that a house divided against itself shall not stand. So the devil wants us to operate in division. Amen? And so uh, God says in Matthew 12 and 25, a house divided against itself shall not stand. So the enemy's move against us is always, say always, always. divide and conquer. Whenever you see division, the move of Satan is in play and he's working to conquer. How do you defeat that? You defeat that by love. Let me give you an example. I, I dealt with a family that was divided, separated. And a sickness was one, on one of the people in the family. And, and, and so, but they were divided. You understand? And uh, the, the, the husband and wife, they were divided. The, this, the family members were angry. Everybody was just separated. And when God sent me to, to go deal with uh, this family, me. He was telling me to utilize the anointing of love. Are you with me? Say that. Utilize the anointing of love. Now, some of you may have been here a while. You've seen me when you do deliverances, different kinds of ways on people. 
and I never do one, different, one deliverance the same way. There's different ways to do it. There's no set pattern that you see me do it in. And neither did you see Jesus. He did all of the healings and deliverance different ways. Because you got different people, and you got different things that are happening to them. You got to understand what is that uh, most suitable for that individual. Uh, but there, there are certain anointings that are utilized in certain ways. And uh, there, there was on many occasions times where the Lord would just tell me, give them a hug and release love upon them. And I would just, instead of commanding to come out and all that, I just hug them and I release the anointing. And I just, and he said, how do you do that? I just think of love and let them know how much I love them. And I release God's love and I tell them, God loves you. And as the anointing emitted from me, because when you latch on to something, your presence becomes one with them. And I release that anointing upon him. And the love permeated from me so strong from the anointing until whatever spirit was there left. It couldn't stand it. And the person just dropped to the ground crying. That done, that's been done many times. So in, in this instance, I went into the house and the Lord had me use forgiveness. And he showed me in the vision himself on the cross. I didn't actually see the faces, but I could see the crosses and someone on the cross. And it was a revelation of what happened uh, with the, the gentleman, who, the young man who had told him, this day you shall be with me in paradise. He showed how that the others were embittered and they were mocking and evil-hearted and nasty, but this guy was showing mercy to Jesus and having feelings for Jesus and sorry for what his situation was, but yet he was seeking mercy for Jesus. The, the Lord says he'll give mercy to who gives mercy. Amen? But the love of God was now being revealed to me how he did that on the cross. He showed mercy and the love of God allowed this man to be with him in paradise. When I went into this particular place with this family to do this deliverance, they were embittered. Nobody was getting along. And I explained to them that I have to, I'm going to walk out and leave. I said, I came here for them to, this person to be helped, but I'll walk out and leave if nobody's going to receive me. Oh, no, we love you. We receive you, Pastor. I said, no. If you receive me, then you would love because I come in the spirit of love. And what you guys are displaying is not the spirit of love. So we're not in agreement. So what I have cannot work here. It can't work here. Because if you're saying you love, but you won't speak to each other, and you won't be kind to each other, and you're holding stuff inside and won't forgive each other, God can't work in here. Jesus would often put folk out of the room because they were not in faith with him or in love. Their spirits were not right. Forgiveness is absolutely necessary because something the devil did to that person or to that family to create a schism, a division, a wall of separation so that there is no love because he knows if there is love, the presence of the Lord can abide. The key to healing and deliverance is the benevolent act of God's love being released into the atmosphere. And the, 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 the reason for forgiveness is so that love can continue. He said, if you what? Continue in my love. Are you with me? And so when a person is, is now embittered, bitterness rots the bones. People get sicknesses, diseases, cancers because they hold things inside. We need God's love because if there is no love, then sickness will come. Problems will come. Now, let, let me take you further. 
Thank you, Lord. He, he wants me to go to Hebrews chapter 12. All right. I want you to take a look at he, Hebrews chapter 2. I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, a lot of times when situations occur in the lives of people, you know, why is God doing this to me? You've, you've heard people say that. Why is God allowing this to happen? Well, God gave us, mankind, dominion in the earth. Amen? So the ball is in our court. And we keep trying to tell God, ask God, do God has given us, we don't want to shoot anybody, but that was just an example. But God has given us the power. Hello, somebody. Is there anybody here who's got the Holy Ghost? So he says he's given us power over all things. In Mark 16, 17, he said, power to cast out devils, to speak in tongues, to lay hand on the sick to recover. He said, if we drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt us. We've given, been given power by God. But do you understand, if the devil knows that we don't realize what we have, or we don't utilize what we have, he can walk right in on us and trick our minds. And tell us, there's no bullets in your gun. You might well throw that gun away. <laughs> you understand? And so we, we don't fight. We don't fight. And then we turn around and ask God, Lord, help me. Do this, do something. Well, God is saying, well, I gave you a gun. Help yourself. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Amen? That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21. And we always looking for the pastor, looking for somebody else to help us. We have been given... But if we're in the spirit of doubt and in the spirit of fear, perfect love casts out all fear. And oftentimes, we're, we don't know how to love ourselves. We don't know how to love ourselves. We, we don't even have confidence in ourselves. You understand? And so we're in constant worry, stress, and fear because we let the devil come in. Why do we keep the love of God upon us? First of all, we got to forgive. You got to forgive because the enemy always tries to cause things to occur to try and make us hold stuff inside. There are a lot of good people walking around with grudges, amen, in their heart about something that happened back in 1976, 1980. That stuff is old. It's been gone. And holding on to it is doing nothing but corrupting your heart from receiving the love of God. God, love, when it's in you, is power. It is agreement with the presence of God. And the devil wants you to be corrupted in your heart so that there's no love in you. When there is love in you, Automatically, there comes joy. When you love somebody, how many know you have joy? Amen. Oh, listen, let's go back. You remember now when you were just in high school and, and you met that special someone and uh, you were all on telephone 
late at night, amen, and then y'all were just holding the phone. You were just holding the phone, and you said, you still there? <laughs> you remember the day, you remember the day, you said, did you say something? No, I say something, did you say something? You know, I love you, I love you too. You were inseparable at that time. And you stay on the phone and almost going to sleep. Were you sleep? No, I wasn't sleep. I heard you. No, that wasn't me. <laughs> you, you know, in that moment, you were smiling. Because with love comes smiles and happiness. You can't say you love somebody like, yeah, I love you too. You heard people say, I love you. They say, yeah, I love you too. That ain't love. That's not love. Love with it brings peace and joy. When there is love in you, there is peace and joy. If there is no peace and joy, then there is no love. Because they come together. It is a part of the first fruits of the Lord, according to Galatians 5 and 22, the, the conduct, the attributes of God is love, joy, peace. That's it. The beginning is love, joy, peace. Love first, then joy, then peace. You got it? And then after that, the second trio is patience. Because you wait on each other. I waited for you after school. I missed my bus because I was waiting on you to come out. You understand? So you do things you normally don't do, you understand, because you have these grave feelings for somebody. You see, that's patience, all right? Love, joy, peace, patience, then you're gentle. You just touch so gently, <laughs> amen. You, you have the soft, kind feelings in your heart, all right? Patience, gentleness, goodness, then you're good to each other. You do good things to each other. I carry your books. You understand? I give you a ride. You do, I'm here, here, you cold, here, take my coat. You got all those nice, good things coming out of your thoughts when you're young in that puppy love. You understand? Because at that point, you really don't know all the wickedness. You're young, and a lot of things haven't happened. Then you gather the, the other three, faith, amen, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, which means teachableness. So you, you, you at that, like a little child, you're ready to listen because you, 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 you're meek. You don't know everything. You don't act like you know everything. Yeah, I know that already. No, you're meek, and so you're listening, and you have a listening ear then because your heart is filled with love. Amen? You're meek. You're meek. Amen. And then you have temperance in you. Temperance means self-control. Self-control. When you love somebody, you listen to them and you, you control yourself where it pertains to them because you want their love back. You know, when you first started dating, I'm just going back for, I'm using your scenario. I'm using this scenario for, to help you understand. And you first met that person, how many know that you didn't act the fool? You didn't raise up and start hollering and yelling. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. You just met them. You just want to get good with them. And how many on that first few dates, you just as nice? Even if you had a little booger in you, you didn't let them know it. <laughs> no, you, 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 you didn't let any temperament rise up because you could control it then. All right? Because you were showing them your feelings. And you might get mad at somebody else, but at that person, at that moment, Oh, you were patient, and you, you, you had a, you had a, a, your temperament was controlled. You didn't act like, because at that moment, love, a form of love was filling your heart. Are you with me? And so what we have to understand is throughout the course of our life, Satan hates that. So he's sending different things toward us to make us fear. To make us fear. And the greatest thing that we fear in this life is death. The greatest assault against love is death. 
What's the greatest assault against love? Death. See, if you knew that you were not going to die, how many know you relax? Things wouldn't bother you. Now, that word death in the Greek is thanatos. T-H-A-N-O, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S, thanatos. It means a separation from life. Got it? So, so, so now, now, listen to me carefully. You can have money in the bank, but if the money leaves the bank, then your bank account is what? Dead. Two people can be together in a marriage, and they separate the marriages dead. So actually, death is related to a separation from life. You got it? So the move of the devil is to separate you from the life that you love. His move is to make you fear that you're not going to be loved. It's a promotion of insecurity. To make you fear your peace, your love, the attributes of God that were there once in you, he wants you to fear that they're gone and that all you had is now about to escape you. He'll do that in your finances. He'll do that in relationships. He'll do that with your property. He'll do that with your automobile. All of it is to produce fear within you. Fear, the greatest element of fear is the fear of death. But all of it is a working to attack love with fear. Fear. Amen? And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of what? Love and of what? A sound man. And so we must be sound in our mind, and we can't get a sound man unless we know the word. The word produces information. And when you know better, you do better. The Bible said in Hosea 4 and 6, God's people are being destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. So what we don't know gives strength to the enemy over us. To create fear in us, to make us doubt the love of God, the love of people, is to cut off the love. Are you with me? And there's a great fear of not being loved. Everybody wants to be loved. But you can get to a point where you're afraid to love. Because the devil can create a problem within the area of your love, whatever it is. Be a love for a car, love for a city, love for a person. And you can get to a city where, where he messes up so bad in your life. And that city you say, I'm scared to even go back to that town. Fear. Fear. It, it cuts off your ability to love. And when you go to a place and you, people, everybody treat you good there. You know, you go to a town and everybody treats you good. And you say, I had a good time in that city. And so now you feel glad to go back there because you felt loved. You felt the love of God there. So love makes us comfortable inside. Are you with me? Now, it's important that we understand this because the devil wants us to be embi embittered, embittered, embittered. So Hebrews 12, 14, uh, uh, I'm going to go back to, well, let me do this first before I go to Hebrews 12, 14. L look at Hebrews 2. All right. In Hebrews chapter 2, if you're there, say amen. I'm not going to take you through all of it, but I want you to notice um, in verse number... 11, are you there? Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 11. The Bible says, For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church I will sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, 
He also himself likewise took part of the same, talking about Jesus, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Who has the power of death? The Bible said, no, 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 that's not what the Bible said. The Bible didn't say Jesus, it said the devil. See it? We just read it to you. That through death, Jesus might destroy him, the, the devil, that had power over death, that is, the devil. The devil had power over death. The devil has got children walking around here now with all kind of death uh, skulls and they're worshiping the spirit of death because the devil is death. Are you with me? A form of his attributes is that death, the grim reaper, is a part of his characteristics. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. God said, I have come that you may have Life. So God is what? Life. He's not death. You can't be both. God is life. God is life. God, let me help you, church. God is love. Love does not kill. God does not kill. You say, wait a minute. I read the Old Testament and all them places. People, Listen to me. What God does is. He puts his hand of protection upon every area of our life. He loves us. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so what? Loved who? Did it say just the Christians? No, he loved all of his creations. But what happened to his creations was the devil got in. That's what happened. When people go and do evil and shoot up schools and do all that evil, it's the devil working in them. Demon spirits that work for the devil have gotten a toehold somehow in their life and they are not in love. They are in division and strife and they're holding something inside of their heart that's ruling their emotions and causing them to want to retaliate. They want to get back. They're saying, somebody bullied me. Somebody didn't love me. There's something going on in their heart that torments their thinking. Those are spirits. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself, what? Against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Jesus just finished telling us in John 15 about obedience to the way of God. If you continue in my love, he said. And so what the devil's move is to create a division and his working is hatred, evil. It's not love. God is love. Are you with me? God does not kill. God, listen to me, God said he will give us what? The desires of our heart. He said that in Psalm 37 and 4. Now watch this. Then he also tells us in Proverbs 4.23 to keep your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. What you and I receive is based upon where our heart is. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, that man looks at the outward part, but God, God looketh upon the heart. So whenever we have something embittered in our heart or division in our heart, God's love can't enter. Because can two walk together except they be agreed? So God can't come into me if I got meanness and evil and unforgiveness in me. I'm not in oneness with him. I'm at that time, at that moment, I'm at one is with who? The devil. Because those are the devil's ways. Are you with me? And so what I have to do is get that stuff out of me. David said in Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity 
which is wickedness, in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So the condition of my heart, if I'm filled with love and mercy and forgiveness, allows the presence of God to come in. What happens to us is something happens that the devil causes, his demons cause through people. We got molested. We got rejected. We got hurt. Watch this. <clears throat> Daddy wasn't there. Mama wasn't there. She was too busy working all the time. There was nobody to love us. Nobody to embrace us and let us feel loved. And so we start looking for love in the wrong places. And the devil sets us up. That's what happened to David. David didn't get the love that he needed from his father. And so he wound up in a situation with Bathsheba. Because his father, uh, he, he, they're, they're, all the sons of Jesse, out of all the sons of Jesse, David wasn't recognized. When, when Samuel was sent, uh, the Bible said, down to Jesse's house to pour the oil, horn of oil uh, on the one that would be the replacement for Saul. And uh, he asked Jesse to bring all of his sons before, uh, b before him, eight sons, bring them all before him. He called all his sons, but he didn't call David. And, and, and Samuel had to say, wait a minute, is this all your son? He said, because none of these are the ones. He said, well, well. He said, well, what? Well, I got another one, man. Well, go get him. Where is he at? He's out there tending the sheep. Why, he didn't, why didn't he recognize David? Why didn't he call his own son? Because in his mind, he felt like David might not be his son. You see, when he went off on a journey, his wife, when he came back, had gotten pregnant and had a son, and the son was David. But the truth is, he had impregnated his wife before he left. And since she wasn't showing, you know, he, he, he assumed she wasn't pregnant. Now he, he comes back, not only is she pregnant, he or she finna pop out a baby. And he's saying to his man, that ain't mine. And this woman been cutting up. That's what he's thinking. So wickedness, the devil's playing with his mind. Are you with me? The devil's playing with his love for his wife and his love for his child. And he got a seed of thought in his mind now that's messing with his love for his wife and for his child. David was really his child. But the devil saw the situation took advantage, jumped in there, and started whispering ideas into Jesse's head. So now he's not treating David right. He's making David feel rejected. He don't hug David. He tell David, go out there and deal with the sheep. Go pick up some poo-poo. This is what David's got to deal with. All the rest of the sons are being dressed. They're being, you know, taken care of. They look, they're being sent to school. They're looking wonderful. But he's a rejected child based upon what their father's feeling in his heart. The devil got to his heart and his love was cut off. And so as a result, God loved him. Ain't you glad God loves you? God is a restorer who wants to put his love back into you. And the Bible said, to whom much is given, much is required. David needed a lot of love. Are you with me? And the reason he, had, he became such a great king, because he loved so hard. That's why he was so great. He loved God's people. And what brought him to the love of God's people was because he loved God. And why did he love God so much? Because God loved him first. That changed his whole life. He became the greatest king. Why? Because he was so filled with love for God. The Bible said he was man. He was a man after God's own heart. He loved God because Nobody loved him, or it seemed to him, nobody loved him but God. You understand? And that love made him great in God's eyes. Are you with me? It changed his whole life because nobody else showed him love. 
His brothers would mock him and say smart stuff with him. When he got ready to go off to fight Goliath and he came to bring some, some bread and vittles for, for the soldiers, he leaped off there and was, hey, y'all. And he's happy, being nice to everybody. Then his brother said something smart to him. What you come up here for? You just come up here to clown. Oh, you can read it in 1 first, first Samuel chapter 17. You read it. His brothers, his own brothers started saying nasty stuff to him. So, you know, David had to, to cling to God in order to feel love. You follow me? But it was a good thing. And so what the devil tries to do to every one of us is cut off our love. Now, the Bible says, hallelujah, in John, 1 John, 1 John, say 1 John, 1 John. chapter 4, verse number 8. Go there. Go there. We're going to dig into love. When I'm done, you're going to know so much about love. It's going to be an absolute uh, difficulty for you not to love. And if you get enough love, then you guess what will come? The power. The joy and the power. The reason that the anointing flows in me so well is because I've been hurt a lot. And when you get hurt a lot, and then God, you cry out to God because you got no help nowhere else. Right? And then when, when, you, when you say, God, help me, when you're all by yourself, then God comes and he gives you his love. You understand? Because really you want to love everybody, but every, a lot of people, instead of loving, you treat you wrong. So it runs you to God or to the devil. Some go run to the devil, so loving the devil. But if you had any knowledge of God, it'll cause you to run to God. The reason folk who been mistreated run to the devil because they never had been taught anything about God, had no love. You understand? So they get mad at society, they want to kill everybody. <laughs> you understand? But when you have been taught something about the love of God, it helps you now to know where to turn to when, no, when there's nobody else to turn to. And so when you turn to God, you love harder because you, you feel like nobody else wants to treat you right. You understand? Because you want to be loved. And, and sometimes for women, it's a blessing not to even have a man. Well, because then it makes you love God even more. Because you have nobody else to show you love. Even Paul talked about that. Paul talked about not even having a wife because he talked about how it kept him in the presence of the Lord. All right? Now, take a look at 1 John chapter 4. If you're there, say amen. amen. Look at verse number 8. Amen. Uh, matter of fact, let's start at verse number 7. John says, beloved, now, know who John is. Know who John is. John is the disciple whom the Lord loved. So who better could teach on this subject than John? John, the book of John, the gospel of John is not one of the synoptic gospels. There are four gospels, but three are called the synoptic gospels. Optic means seen. You do that with your eyes. Optic, optometrist, optimal. You understand? So, so you do that with your eyes, seen. So, so, so the word optic deals with, and so sin means seen together. You, you, you got it? Sin, S-Y-N. It deals with together or, or same. You understand? Or, or so, so synoptic deals, it's actually saying seen the same. Seen the same. That's what synoptic gospel means. What does it mean? So when you hear the word synoptic gospel, it means those three gospels that are seen the same. In other words, all these three saw the same thing pretty much. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is not a synoptic gospel. John's gospel, in other words, they were all pretty much talking about the same thing. They all were not in the same exact place, but they all said pretty much the same thing, which lets you know that they all uh, was correct. You got it? Three, four chords, not easy book, and then 
in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So these three were the witnesses to determine that all this was correct because you were there and you were there and you were there. We were not standing together. We all saw the same thing. So it had to be right. You got it? But now John, John, if you read his gospel, you find his, he's talking about Jesus. He is the one who's given to reveal Jesus. So the Lord chose him, the apostle whom he loved, to talk about love. All right? So here we go. In 1 John chapter 7, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us what? Love what? One another. All right? So whenever you find somebody coming to the congregation, they're talking about people, as soon as they come in, that's the wrong spirit. Are you with me? The devil's working through that person. Whenever they run around, sowing discord, gossiping, finding fault, when a person come in and start immediately persecuting the church, tearing the church down, talking about the people, talking about the pastor, Satan sent them. You understand? And you can look for the rest to happen. They're looking to pluck somebody out. You hear me? I say, are oh, you here? They're looking to pluck somebody out. That is Satan working through that person. Why? Because when you meet somebody, you're trying to make friends, not make enemies. Come on. Huh? And when, when we greet each other, we greet each other, the Lord says, with a holy kiss, with love. He's trying to get us to learn how to exhibit the care and concern for one another. So he says in verse number 7 of John, 1 John chapter 4, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God. All right? That means at that time, at that moment, they're in God. All right? And knowing and knoweth God. Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. What is God? Love. Verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Live through him. What is he? Love. love. So we might live through what? Love. That's the way we're going to live in God through love. Not just because we're in the church. You can go to church and still don't go to God. You got to have love in you. When you find people in the house of God and they have no love in them, they're not in God. They're just in church. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Are you understanding? Are you with me? So, so he says in verse 10, Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. If we love one another. If we love one another. Okay, so here's what happened. So when I went to this place I told you about that time, the people were divided so the Spirit of God couldn't come. So it didn't make sense for me to go in there. You, you got it? When I got those people, by giving them the word of the God, the Lord, explaining them about forgiveness, and the Bible said Ephesians 4.32, to be kind to one another, to be tenderhearted, to be forgiven, even as uh, uh, Christ for God's sake had forgiven you. God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. So, so, so when I got them to understand and receive that, that Spirit broke up off of them. They were all harmonious and loving, and now I could go in and do the work to pray for the brother, the brother or the sister to get healed. You understand? Because they couldn't get healed if the spirit of warfare was going on. There's a tug of war in the spirit. God can't work in that. There's got to be an atmosphere for the grace to enter. Are you with me? So a lot of time I may come to church and everybody want to just have me come up and preach right away. And I, I can't do that in the spirit of, if the spirit's not right. I, I have to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost that's in me. I know the atmosphere. And so I'm, you might find me take off and start worshiping. And getting everybody to worship. Why? I'm creating that. You say, well, we already did it. Well, 
I'm creating an atmosphere. Because that atmosphere wasn't there, was not conducive to the Spirit of God. Maybe the people that were singing the choir, their spirit wasn't right. Maybe their harmony wasn't right. Maybe their moment wasn't right. They have to make sure that when, before they get up there and sing, they get all stuff out of them. Because whatever's in you, if you're a person somewhere in a church and, you, and you, you're gay, your spirit cannot be received by God. You're releasing out of your mouth words. Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. So when I release something out of my mouth, that's a spirit. Hello, somebody. It's a spirit. And so if it is the spirit of God, then there's peace coming in. You got it? But just because I'm singing a song doesn't mean love is coming out of me. I'm meaning it. I might just be saying something I memorized. It's coming out of my head, but not my heart. You got it? What's coming out of my heart is all that I just finished, you know, you just finished cussing out your sister. Kicking your dog. You follow me? Or you just stole some, or you just finished smoking some cigarettes. Or you had a little drink of alcohol before you came. You understand? Or you kissed your boyfriend. <laughs> Amen. So, 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 so when a guy stand up there and try to praise his spirits like that, God can't receive that. That's a stench. There's no agreement. And though you heard the songs, the anointing can't flow. Are you with me? Can't nobody get delivered. Can't nobody get healed. You follow me? So that's why I have to shift the atmosphere. You, you understand? To make sure that the anointing. Then you might hear me say, oh, I feel like we stepped into something. Hmm? That means the atmosphere has been cleared. You got it? There's a shift in the atmosphere. Because atmosphere, you feel it, right? And how do radio waves come in? Through the atmosphere. Huh? Television signals. It come in through the neutrons, the protons, the molecules that are in the atmosphere. And so we, we're sending for the Bible said in Psalm 107 20, God sent his word to what? To heal us and to deliver us from our destruction. So the word that comes forth must be coming from the heart of God, but it has to fight through all this stuff. Nobody's going to get delivered. The atmosphere must be filled with love. When the atmosphere is filled with love and worship for God, God can just fill that house. No, nobody, nobody even have to get touched. They can just get all over the place delivered and healed. Amen? So the Bible says in Psalm 22 and 3, when praises go up, it says in Psalm 22 and 3 that God will inhabit. <laughs> God will inhabit. Y'all read your Bible. God will inhabit the praises of his people. You understand? Too much church, not enough Bible reading. <laughs> All right? So God inhabits the praises of his people. You got it? And what God wants is you saying to him, you love him. You worship him. You honor him. When he hears you say that and mean that, his presence comes. When people are, worship is an expression of love to God. Praise is an expression of love and honor of God. And when we do that to him, he now comes in to give us his love. And the benevolence of God falls upon us. Then people get healed. People get delivered. Things change. You got it? And blessings and the grace of God is there. But just because somebody's singing doesn't mean that the presence is going to fall. If their spirit's not right, it's not going to work. Are oh, you got it? That's why choir has to pray first and make sure that their spirits are, are right and that they're in harmony and beauty. Because love, God is beautiful. You, you understand? And harmony means agreement. You got it? Two folk wrestling in the spirit, their voice sound terrible together. That's not love. <laughs> There's no harmony in that. So God wants, he wants us to be in his love and walking in agreement with him. Now I want you to go back to John 15. All right. So that's why it's so important that we are clean and we're clean how? Through his word. When we are clean, his love can fill us and his love is completing us. So forgiveness is absolutely crucial. You got it? So, so, so Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with what? All men and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any roots of bitterness spring up and trouble you. 
That's how many become defiled. Defilement means the love is now broken. So he said in Ephesians 4.32, be kind to one another, be tenderhearted, be forgiven. You understand? So in, when you do that, then that allows God to work through you. And then the other thing is folk deal with all these foreign worships. Hoodoo, voodoo, santria, eastern star, witchcraft, you know, masonry, eastern stars, Ouija boards. They deal with all this stuff, going to psychics. You bring in demon spirits in that are filled with hatred. And there is no anointing that can flow in that. You got it? So God put his hand of love upon every portion of our life, right? It's not God who leaves. He never leaves nor forsakes us. It's us leaving, going, trying some other way. And so what does God give us? The desires of our heart. So how we get these problems? We brought it on ourselves. If we stayed in God's word and his way, then God stays with us. He never leaves us or we stay with God. You got it? But when we leave, see, we, we're forcing the hand of God to not be there. You understand? If in our sexual life, if we're doing it the right way, the way God said, God's in it. The bed is defiled. In Hebrews 13, 14 said, the bed is undefiled in marriage. You got it? But we're trying some other thing. Amen. Fornication. God's not in that. 1 Corinthians 6, 18. God's not in it. He said, run from that. Right? So God can't be in agreement with that. He can't be in agreement with two men hugging and kissing and marrying. Because that's not what he created. You understand? When we do it the way he created it, then he abides in it. If it's not the way he said it, then he can't be in agreement with it. Are you with me? I can't make it be my way and then think God's going to agree with it. I'm not God. He's God. So I have to submit to his will. Hello, somebody. And so what happens to us is that when God moves or we move from God, we're wide open target for the devil. That's how the, the enemy comes in upon us because we've left the way of the Lord. And we bring, we open the door. The Bible said, give no place to the devil. Ephesians 4, 27 says, need to give place to the devil. So we ourselves do things without thinking and we respond incorrectly to each situation that comes our way. And our response opens up and let the devil in. And the devil does things and his demons do things to try and get us to react the wrong way. And wherever we react the wrong way, and we generally react out of our emotions. Amen? And when we, you move by your feelings. We don't move by our feelings. That gives place to the enemy. We move by what? No, we move by the word of God. We move by faith in the word of God. We, Jesus said in Matthew 4, man shall live by what? Every word that what? That proceeds from the mouth of God. So we move by the word. God follows his own word in a matter of time. If this teaching has been a blessing to you, call our church office at 562-653-9868. I'm Apostle Reginald Lawrence, bidding you, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and his word is on the move. Amen.